Hey, everybody. This is Eric with The Dramatic. Thanks for joining us for another episode of The Backbeat. I'm so excited. I've got my friend Joey Donhow all the way from Iowa with me today. What's happening, buddy? How's it going, Eric? How's it going, guys? I'm really excited for this. I've been waiting pretty much a long time for this. And thank you for inviting me. I am it's an honor to be here, really. Oh, dude, my my pleasure. It's an honor to have you. Thanks for wanting to be on. Thanks for your enthusiasm. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Well, let's let's jump right in here to talking about your background with drums. Like, I mean, I also I'll say this at the onset. I'm such a fan of your playing style and the the passion that you play with. And we've joked on the social medias about, about me being jealous of your hair. <laughs> And all that. How did you get into drums? What was the story there? Well, I actually I can't remember a moment like, but ever since I was a little kid, I was always driven to the drums. But um, I started playing when I was eleven years old. Uh, I had my first drum lesson here in Iowa, right before I was about to move back to my home country, which is Bolivia, South America, and. I basically learned just one beat and it was like the bar four, one, two, three, four on the hi-hat, one on the kick, three on the snare. And that was my first ever lesson that I had. After that, I, when, once I moved back to Bolivia, there was a, a guy at the church from the youth group that started giving me lessons. So I had like about, I'm guessing like about four months that I had lessons with him before going back to, my, to the town where I lived. And after that, it was pretty much trying to get into playing in church. And uh, uh, after a few years, I think once I turned 14-ish, that's when I had my first drum kit. So I actually like to count from that moment because my progress pretty much started going on from that, from that gotcha. moment. And um, for me, it was like uh, a way, I was always trying to figure out a way to make drum cover videos. I was blown away the first time I saw one like from Quibus uh, when he did like one of his covers. This is how naive I was. I thought uh, the cover that he was doing was a song of his. I didn't know what a drum cover was. I didn't know what cover meant. And for me, I was like, oh, this is so cool watching these like drummers play. And then over time, I've learned that, oh, it's a cover. So ever since I was a teenager, I was trying to figure out a way to do a drum cover video. And while I was doing that, at the same time, I would play in church. And well, it was pretty much a long ride there because there was a moment where I just was trying really hard to get in, but I wasn't that good. So I've been there. I started off. Yep. <laughs> I started off being like pretty much kind of like a kid that was just sitting there on on a bench waiting for a moment. And over time, I became like uh, the drummer for the youth group and like as years went by, I became like the main drummer for like the main service at my church. Once I left for college, I got in a band. I started playing with them. We we did an album. Unfortunately, I didn't record the drums on that one, but it was a, like a really cool experience for me to start like playing like actually in front of a lot of people and playing like our own songs because I was pretty much yeah. used to playing worship or just playing in my room, like whatever I would come up with. So after that, a few years went by, band broke up and I started playing a bunch of gigs, like pretty much cover bands and I would fill in for some other drummers. But one of my fun experience would be I started playing on a Linkin Park tribute band. That for me was the moment where I was like, okay, I really want to play like heavier music. I really have a lot of fun because my previous band wasn't heavy. It was rock, but it wasn't like heavy like I like. So after that, I was like pretty much trying to search for like a, a heavy group or something that went that way. Things didn't turn out the way I wanted to, but I landed with a really nice band, really nice, cool dudes that I was playing with them. And um, while we were working on the EP, like the situation down there in Bolivia just kind of went for the bad turn. So I had to leave the country by that time and left the band. So it, it was kind of a bummer. I finally found a band that I was actually liking and had to leave. So once I left, came over here to the States, the first thing, like, no, 
let's back it up a bit. Sorry, I have ADHD. That's why I don't <laughs> you're in good company, <laughs> man. We're good. I'm following you. <laughs> so once I moved uh, to the States, the only thing I got out, I, I bagged up, I packed up my clothes. I had two cameras, my laptop and a bag of drumsticks. That's all I brought with me here to the States. So the first thing I did, like the first thing I bought here was um, one of those practice pads, like the DW practice pad uh, kits. And my idea for that time was like, okay, I am going to do this Trump cover thing video. I have kind of the time now. And the idea was I was going to start with those pads and use silent um, volume symbols for that. So that's how my channel was supposed to start until I came across the Elise's kit. Like it was a e-kit. So I was like, okay, this is cheap and I can plug it into my computer. I don't have to worry about any microphones, anything. So that for me was pretty much the start for my channel or how I ended up where I'm at now. Obviously over time I started upgrading little by little like up yeah. to the point where I got an acoustic kit. <laughs> I think I think when I found your channel, um, and I can't remember what the cover was that I came upon, or is um, or wh whichever one I came came to first. But I remember you had like the 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 the, the, the electric kit, and I think you were triggering a snare, maybe. Yes, yes, that's exactly this one. It's like well, you can't see it really. <laughs> Can you see it? You see yeah. This? Okay. So yeah, it was this. It's an OCDP uh, uh, 13 by 7. I like that size. Uh, it's, uh, I, forgot, I forgot what wood is it. But yeah, so I put a mesh head on and I had a trigger on that. So the idea with that was because when I started using the E kit, the whole goal was like eventually start using like an acoustic kit. That was like the main goal when I started like, so once I started doing that, I was like, I have to think on the next move that I'm going to do just so that I don't get to a point where I'm kind of like stuck, where am I going with this? Right. So the first test was to use like a real snare drum and trigger that. So if I'm able to make that work, I can make it work with toms and like a kick. So I started off little by little. And once I would add like the snare and I started putting like I had some cheap Amazon low volume symbols that I would place them on top of the symbols. Those were mainly for me to kind of get used to like the movement that you would get on a real kit. Now, and plus they look kind of sick, but <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's, that's awesome. It's I'm such a visual person too. So like that's anytime I make a decision to do something, there is a certain attention to the visual aspect of what I'm getting yeah. ready to do that I, that I'm very involved with like um okay well it'd be nice if everything was you know level and matched and you know what I mean like <laughs> yeah. except for a snare you can I can I can be like yeah the snare doesn't have to match it's kind of like its own thing yeah yeah exactly but yeah looking looking cool in fact if anytime I'm like scrolling through like Sweetwater or something I'll be like oh man those symbols look really neat they might sound like crap but, but I'm like but I'm drawn to it visually first so like they yeah. look really neat you know <laughs> But um, so so you've now you've currently you've you've upgraded your plane everything acoustic with microphones, right? Yep. Yep. Gotcha. What are you What are you running all that through? What's your process with recording? So uh, right now I'm using. So I bought a a Samson uh, drum pack of mics. So it's like they're pretty cheap. But uh, over time I kind of upgraded. So I got the on the overhead the CO two Samson mics. I got the Q72 uh, on the rack tom right now, and I'm using the kick mic from the that Samson, uh, Samson kit. And then I got a D6, Audix D6 on the kick, Audix uh, I5 on the top snare, and I got an SM57 on the bottom. Then I'm using for a room mic. I, I recently been testing it out. Like it's this uh, Sterling, I don't know which one it is. <laughs> I've been using like a focus right that came with the solo, like for room mic but so far i'm just testing that out i've been using a room mic for about a month so i'm testing that out cool so. what are you what are you mixing it because you do one of the things that i like about what you're doing is is that you you put a lot of attention into your mix the way the drums sound the way the drums sit into the song you're playing with 
what are, what are you mixing in? Oh, I'm using Logic Pro for the for the DAW. So it, it goes in into my Focusrite Scarlett 18i20. And yeah, it's pretty darn good. I, I, I can't complain enough. Uh, it's, it's, it works. I have no issues so far. So I'm trying to hopefully soon this year I can up, uh, like not upgrade. So add eight more channels because I want to start using like a, a microphone on the hi-hat. Yeah. have an extra mic on the outside of the kick drum maybe a third mic on the on the snare i've, I've been like nerding out on the snare sound a lot so nice yeah. nice yeah i would do that too the one i just bought has um like eight additional like line level inputs so i would have to buy like a preamp but then i was like yeah i'd love to mic the hi-hat get a little bit more control over that the, the yeah. second kick drum mic one in you know one out um and then oh, just yeah. to, and to have one have a channel free for when I use an auxiliary snare because what I do now is I'll pull my tom if you can see but like I'll pull one of my tom mics off and just yeah and just not play that tom for that I've song. No, I, I've <laughs> noticed that I've noticed that on your videos. Yeah, for the the reason why I have now like a, a room mic is I clearly don't have another rack tom. I used to have two rack toms, so I have the twelve inch, sixteen inch. So there was a fourteen inch in between. So gotcha. I removed that one so that I can add an extra microphone. The, yeah. And right now, the two microphones that I'm like never going to remove from like recording drums will be the bottom snare and the room mic. Uh, so far, I've been having wonderful results. Good. That's what I want to add to you is I'm just recording on the top of the snare with an SM57. Oh, um, you're going to love it. You're going to love it. Nice. Yeah, I'm excited about it. It's, a, it's kind of a standard thing to do for recording you know, stared at me, you get that whole different texture to, to the sound of it and everything. Yeah. And you're, you've got it. Well, your, you your snare a, sound is killer too, by the way. Well, it took, it took me a while. So like what I, I always say when people compliment my snare, I say it's the HD dry from Evans. <laughs> that thing is the yeah. best head I've ever found. I've been looking for like the perfect drum head for my snare. I've been using Remo for such a long time. And Evans right now is the, the one I'm going for now. And the HD dry is just like, oh, yeah. Don't yeah. use any moon gels. You don't, I've, in my case, because I have a really small snare drum, a 13-inch, don't really need that, like, moon gels. You kind of kill, depends what song you're playing. But so right. far, no moon gels on top, and it has a really nice crack into it. Nice. Yeah, I like the HD dry, and I like the Genera dry, too, has a nice, has a nice sound, too. Those are kind of my two go-to heads uh for for my snares i yeah that's a good and um and i think you know i know i'm, I'm i've been evan's guy just because like i found stuff that i liked you yeah. know and i know other people have found remo stuff that they like and uh but yeah to, but like i just i've just been a had a lot of uh i've enjoyed what i've gotten from from evan's oh yeah for yeah. me i've always watched evan's like on other drummers like videos and stuff and I was always curious about that because I've used pretty much all my life Remo heads until I started using this kit. So it's, it's been, I guess, two years. No, I think less than that, but I've been using Evans so far and I, I love them. Like they're, they're awesome. Nice. Nice. Excellent. So tell me a little bit about um, kind of your musical influences. Cause like, I know you said you kind of grew up, like in church playing yeah. in church and that's my background too yeah. like i grew up listening to a lot of christian music and doing a lot of playing in church and for me it was later in life that i'm like oh my gosh there's so much other cool music <laughs> out here <laughs> you know what was what was your story with finding those musical yeah. influences well it's pretty much like that so uh for me the the band that pretty much changed like on my whole perspective on music was pod um yeah. And my ever first album was Satellite from, from P.O.D. I just fell in love with that like genre, like new metal, rap core music. So I would listen to a lot of like Christian bands while growing up because I wasn't allowed to listen to any music that wasn't Christian when I was a kid. So it was P.O.D., Reliant K, oh, yeah. Project 86, MXPX, uh, Blindside. I got in a little bit later from that. That and then Blindside was the one that pretty much got me into like heavy, heavy music for me. Like the, those are like Christian bands that were 
that influenced me a lot. Then I started listening to Pillar. Oh, Pillar, Pillar. Yep. Gotcha. Yeah, familiar with those those guys. Yeah, like yeah. I discovered some of those guys late too, because I know I'm, I've got a few years on you. I'm sure. <laughs> so like oh yeah, band. for sure. Well, I look a lot younger uh, than what I like than my real age because people think I'm like in my early 20s or like younger than that. I always take that. I appreciate when people say that to me. It's a great compliment. I'm actually on my late 20s. Oh, okay. um, I'm 28. I'm going to turn 29 next month. So. Oh, right. So push, pushing <laughs> the 30 mark there. Yeah. Yeah. Yep, <laughs> yep, yep, pretty much. I look a lot younger. Maybe it's because I'm skinny. I can't gain weight. Even living here in the States, eating a lot of junk food, that doesn't yeah. work for me. So. And Plus I'm having I the opposite drums, problem. I sweat a lot. So. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> gotcha. yeah. <laughs> I'm having the opposite problem. I told, uh, I, I told my wife last night, I'm like, like, I don't know, just another night in the ongoing saga of Eric's bad eating choices at, in the evening. You know what I mean? Like, and, uh, but, uh, but I did, I, I did a gig several years ago and just the rehearsal process, like I dropped 30 pounds, you know, in like two and a half months just because of the physicality. Oh yeah. Oh you yeah. Know, of it. And so I don't get that much. I don't get to put that much time into where I'm burning a lot of, a lot of calories, but, um, so so you're talking about you know some of those christian band influences and and i came late to like the reliant k you know thing and i love reliant k we've done reliant. a couple couple covers yeah from, but uh, mood rank yeah <laughs> and i was like i was like man people are gonna think like i did this it's like well Loretta, this is your pick so you get to help me talk about why we picked this song she's like i love this song it's awesome <laughs> it's, enough. it's a that whole album i i remember getting that the whole album where mood rank is on awesome yeah, it's a good, it's a good album. My favorite band of all time has been POD. Uh, and I would always check like their tour dates, everything, even though I was in South America and Bolivia, I would still check for that, like see if they were going to come by like Des Moines, Iowa, even though I wasn't there, but I was like, please, I would love them. <laughs> I would love to see them. And last year while I was checking, I think one of the bandmates like posted, oh, new tour dates, we're going to be in. And then I saw the list and there was, there was Des Moines, Iowa. I was like, didn't think it twice, bought my ticket. And I was like, so thrilled about that. And the cool thing about that same day that they played, I remember like I did a Instagram reel, like of me playing boom from them and they shared it on their uh, Instagram. And I was like, that, like my life is made. I can retire now. Like <laughs> my favorite band of all time shared <laughs> That's one awesome. of my videos. So for me, I was like sh in shock. Even when I got to meet them, I was like, we're in the meet and greet. Everybody was asking questions. I had so many questions, but nothing came out of my mouth. Nothing. <laughs> uh, I was like, oh, I was so nervous. My, my hands were shaking. And I, when it came my turn to get the picture with them, I just froze. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> it's so, a yeah. starstruck moment. Yeah, I get it. I get it. Yeah. I had, I had one of the bands that I used to listen to audio adrenaline, their guitar player came and was teaching like an audio production class at the college I was going to at the time. And I was like, old, like, like you, you're like, you said you're in your, you know, your late twenties and you're like, I shouldn't be starstruck by anything, but it's like, these yeah. guys were so influential and that's how I felt about meeting this guy. So I totally get it. It's like, yeah. And I just fanboy for one second before we <laughs> come real friends, you know, like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's, that's exciting. Oh, that what a yeah. neat thing to meet, to like meet one of the most, you know, one of the influential bands yeah. and, and drummers, I imagine too. Um, yeah. For me, it, it was like, I couldn't believe it. It was like, I, after that show, I was pretty much, my ears were in pain because I was really up front. I didn't have any ear protection, <laughs> but I just couldn't believe it. I, I thought I was going to cry, but I didn't. So <laughs> I get it. I, to I, I totally get it. When I got to see 21 Pilots, I kind of was a little teary. Oh, you got yeah. to see them. I need to see those guys. Oh, dude, those guys, like, I, I mean, it was on their trench, their trench tour. I love and, that. Um, oh, it was. That's, that's one of my favorite ones. Same, same. It took it took a little while. Sorry, side note here. It took a little while for the new one to grow on me, you know, because yeah. I liked Trench so much. Me, um, but yeah, but I felt that way too. Like I was like, 
there's a lot of backstory with with that band and my son and stuff. So I was like, it was just okay. so cool to see them. And right. what showman. I mean, it's just like what an entertaining experience. And um, and without like diving into too many details, it was almost like in places like a spiritual experience, like not band worship kind of thing. But like, you know, you talk about growing up in church. And so you, you see a lot of a lot of things. Mm-hmm. And there were moments that were for me that were reminiscent of youth group moments, yeah. you know, and I was like, oh, wow. So it was beyond just a, a physical experience out here. It like did something in here you know, for yeah. me, which was totally wild. But at any rate, what, so we both grew up listening to Christian music. We could chit chat about that for days. Um, but what, yep. but then at what point were you like, cause I know you've done, you've done some Lincoln Park covers. You've done some Papa Roach, some other bands. Uh, what, what kind of got you into like, Oh my gosh, listen to all this other stuff. So <laughs> it, it was around my teens. So like right when I started, when I turned 13, 14, you get like, you would call that emo phase. I I think I'm still in that phase, but <laughs> <laughs> but for me, I think the first band that got me like uh, that I started loving was a uh, Slipknot. Okay. So I would be like before listening to them, I would like hear about them all these guys with masks and everything. I was kind of scared, and when I got to listen to their music, I'm like, it's not that scary. It's like pretty pretty cool actually. And the funniest thing was I never knew they were from Iowa. That's the, like, oh, until I didn't years, know that <laughs> until years later, I was like, oh, they're from Iowa. I'm like, oh, that's even cooler. So I got into like Slipknot. I started listening to a lot of Marilyn Manson. Um, then what was this other band? Uh, I'm trying to think. I had it in the back of my mind, but uh, Slipknot, Marilyn Manson. Oh. System of a Down, yeah. System okay. of a Down. Then I got into Corn a lot. Like I love a lot of new metal. Like so, Corn and Deftones became like my top, like two bands, like that I would listen to. Like I can still listen to them like every single time, and they're like pretty dope to hear. Nice, yeah. There's music that sticks with you like that. Like even just an album. Like anytime a, a particular album will come on, I'll be like, yeah, it doesn't get old. Yeah, to me, it still has the yeah. same visceral reaction that i had the first time i heard it and yeah i love that it's it's music is cool like that and i i think that's that's kind of one of the cool things about like what what we're all doing with youtube and music is not just introducing one another to new songs or new bands or whatever but like i think music kind of connects us to because it's such a universal experience you know oh yeah it is i can't like a lot of the bands like pretty much when I started college or through that time, a lot of the bands I started listening to were like, because I would watch people doing drum covers. So like a lot of my like music that I listen now, like Bring Me the Horizon, Issues, all these like metal core bands. I've heard them through Matt McGuire or Luke Holland or drummers like them. I never knew those bands exist until I saw them playing the, the cover. So I was like, but I would tend to go back and watch more of the drum cover than, to, than the song because I would like to see that like, right, gotcha, aggression or like a, a energy. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, no, it's it's so neat to watch people play with like, and everybody kind of brings their own different kind of energy to what they're doing behind yeah. the kit. Um, and like sometimes, like I feel like I can be so like, just like concentrate face. You know, and play and 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 um, but like it's another there's other times I just feel really comfortable in what I, with what I'm doing. It can be looser, but one of the things I like about watching you play, not only are you an amazing musician, but I just love the way that your whole body is into what you're doing. Like it's a full body onslaught on that drum kit, and I just love it. It's so fun to oh, watch. Thanks. I I think uh, the main thing that helps is my long hair, uh, not so much my playing because oh. <laughs> <laughs> because I don't have to exaggerate a lot of the movement I do because of the long hair, but <laughs> I was being sarcastic, by the way. <laughs> but yeah, to me, no, I always wanted to be like nuts and crazy when I would play drums, but I couldn't do that because you can't do that kind of stuff in church or like, or right. when I would play like in, in some bars and stuff like that, I was just trying to focus like to play. And now like that I have, I'm in my basement, I'm all by myself. I just start going nuts. And I started noticing that when I started filming myself, I'm like, oh, that's, 
That's too much movement of the head, I think. <laughs> Let's cut the camera here. <laughs> well, it is that you see you talk about you don't do we don't do that stuff in church. And and that's yeah. that's true. There could be certain elements of like what you're playing that kind of are universal, but there's certain things that like there's been kind of an expectation. Yeah. That so uh and I'm even now like like this is what I drummed in today, like my head on backwards and stuff, like which seems little, but I grew up in a in a culture where it was like you didn't wear hats, earrings mm -hmm. were even like, what's wrong with you? kind of thing, you know, and and just just do the thing. And yeah. I'm learning now like to bring some of what I bring in the drum attic to what I'm playing in in church, because it's all passion, is all that that is. You know, yeah. it's passion for what you're yeah. doing. And uh and fortunate enough to be playing with a bunch of people that are like, yeah, dude. Yeah, I'll do that. Play louder. Do you want to do a drum solo? I'm like, no, slow down. Spark. <laughs> <laughs> One thing at a time. One thing at a yeah. time. But yeah, but that's cool. But you kind of discover that when you're by yourself in an environment where there's no expectation. Yeah. Well the, kind of well, the thing that I like when I make, like, when I especially make my videos, the song makes me feel something. Like, there's, a, like, an energy that it has. And I want to, like, make sure that the viewer can, like, feel that or see that energy that I'm feeling when I listen to the song, when I'm playing the song. Plus it's drums. So like, it's a lot of movement. You're moving your hands, you're moving your feet. So there's a lot of action that goes into that. And to me, it's like really important on my videos to show that energy, make it yeah. fluent, try to like go with the flow of the song. And I've noticed like in some covers that I did, like at the end, you can see my face is like pretty mad. As soon as it shuts down, I start smiling at the end. <laughs> It's yeah. kind of like I'm in character. Yes. I couldn't believe it. I was like, just, and then <laughs> it's such. A, it I was like it. such a like a switch, and I was like, okay, that's kind of scary, but cool. <laughs> yeah. Well, sometimes like it's like you're you're tapping into that energy of the song, you know, that mo oh. mood of the song, and um, and not all not all music is is happy, and it doesn't have to be because life is both. Happy, you know, it's happy, sad, it's angry, it's, you know, I mean, it's helpful, it's kind, it's mean. I mean, life throws it all at you. And so that's yeah. what's so nice about music and being able to tap into some of those, you know, some of those things and express anger, even, you know, through music. And what better instrument, too, by the way, than just oh, hitting yeah. stuff? I oh, mean, yeah. Come on. <laughs> that's just awesome. Like, I, sometimes I would throw the drumsticks at the end. I just, I, and, when I see the video of me playing, I'm like, why did I do that? I'm like, it's, but just bashing stuff around. It's just, come on. <laughs> it's pretty cool. Pretty sweet. Yeah, no, absolutely. Like I'm so, I'm so thankful for it as an outlet even, you know, and um, it's, it's great. So tell me what is, uh, well, let me actually, I was gonna, let me switch gears. I was going to ask you a different <laughs> question. Um, so aside from, from drums and just, you know, bringing a steaming cup of awesome to your videos when you do that. What, what else, what do you do when you're not playing drums? Well, what do I do when I'm not playing? So uh, I work at two jobs currently right now. So I work uh, as an interpreter and I work at a restaurant right now. So I'm pretty much all week doing that. And I only have one day off that day off. I either do my laundry <laughs> and I'm playing drums. Usually like, besides drumming i would be trying to like write new music i've been trying to learn to play guitar by oh, the way cool. if you see me play guitar i don't know how to play it's just by ear i'm still learning on that so i'm not a guitar player that, but that's how you get to be a guitar player yep it's, that's true starting off recognizing i'm not but i'm working yep. towards it yeah i'm working towards that it's it's because some people so what are you playing what notes i'm like i have no idea it just sounds cool so like <laughs> I can yeah. tell you what tuning the guitar is. That's my knowledge with guitar. But so I would be doing either that or pretty much uh, working. I, I spend a lot of time pretty much working most of the time. So it's a nice rest that I can have from my daily life to play drums. So it's, I've been thinking about that question because I've been watching a lot of your videos. Like, what do I do out of drumming or like in my time off? I'm like, I only play drums. 
that, that's that is my time off <laughs> yeah but i try like so so far i've been trying to stack up a bunch of covers so i'm going to start having a couple of days off so i'm going to enjoy a little bit of like the summer that we have because here winter isn't nice in iowa it's pretty pretty dark and brutal and cold and sad so i better enjoy the outside a little bit so i'm going to stack up covers so I, i'm going to spend time outside a little bit this time how did those, we were talking before we started recording that I, I spent some time in Minnesota. So very similar, brutal winters. How does that affect um, basement temperature? Oh my you? God. Oh my God. So uh, I would have to have a heater for that. And I would look at the, like the, pretty much the um, check like temperatures of the week. And depending if it's going to be below zero or like really cold, I would remove my symbols and just take them upstairs because I don't want to risk that temperature change, even though some of them, the symbols have like their pro coverage or whatever, but I, I still don't want to crack them. So yes. I'm pretty sure some of that will affect. So I sometimes either, even the interface, I've taken it upstairs, I've moved stuff around. So um uh, Normally, I try to make my setup that it's easy. When it gets to that point, like winter time, I set up um, everything in a spot so it's easy to pick it up in case of that. Plus, for summer, I got ready just in case if there's a huge storm because that already happened. And there was just a little bit of water. Nothing was damaged. Gotcha. Oh, that's scary, though. That's ooh, ooh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, ooh, yeah. That's scary. Our, our fear, because I'm upstairs, is it water? But it's like this house that we're in is a, is like 110 years old. Um, it's it's like, will I ever just drop into the kitchen? <laughs> you know, <laughs> like <laughs> I don't know if our insurance covers that. <laughs> well, you, I, in some of your videos, you can see like the symbols moving a little bit. They go, yeah, <laughs> yeah, it looks like a stage. Hell yeah! <laughs> there's a couple places. There's a couple floorboards that if you step on them, there you know you can. But generally, it's pretty. It's solid. Uh -huh. um, but, but yeah, Loretta's like, yeah, when you're playing like the lights, you know, that are attached to the ceiling downstairs, just vibrate. And I'm afraid like the glass is going to just like come right off and then break all oh over my. the floor. <laughs> I'm like, wow. And depending on what oh. it is you're playing, right? Well, let's hope that heavier. doesn't happen. Yeah. Oh, no doubt. Oh, yeah. No doubt. <laughs> oh, yeah. Hope, hope oh, that yeah. never happens. Oh, yeah. Depend yeah. Well, yeah, depends what you're playing. Like, because you could be playing a slow song. Well, no, I had one time a camera fall in my head while playing this uh, slow song, oh, but it was because no. I didn't tape it correctly. So the one I have on my oh. on my top part. So I was filming and then dropped down. Oh my gosh. That's in between my legs. So, so it could have been on my head, but like the GoPro, the GoPro was fine. I was fine. So good. That's the important thing. The GoPro and then yourself. Yeah. <laughs> like it was a kind of expensive camera. So yeah. Oh, I get it. I worked with a photographer one time and his thing was like, protect the camera. We were doing yeah. like sports stuff. He's like, protect the camera. And so I kind of yeah. still carry some of that mentality, you know, into yeah. this, which is a pretty safe environment. But, you know, like free things like that happen. And it's like, you don't want to have to buy a new camera here. I totally, I totally get it. So tell me what is, what is in store for those of us that are fans of your channel? What's coming up on Joey Donhouse YouTube channel? Well, obviously, it's going to be more drum covers. Uh, I've been stacking a bunch more. So I've been changing a little bit the setup lately just to switch things up. But my main goal is to eventually start releasing some of my own music. So last year, I had uh, the tragedy, I could say that. But I've been working on my own stuff for about a year, and my computer died on me. So all my music that I've been working on for about a year and a half was all gone. So I started all from scratch at the beginning of this year again. So I'm working on that. Hopefully I can get something out by December. I don't want to say like nice December or next year, like at least have something. So that would be something to work like in the long term. But either way, I'm still trying to think to maybe show some like a drum tour of my kid. If you guys are interested, let me know. Like, but uh, yeah, it, it would be mainly that. Sweet. I'm interested. Like, I'll just go ahead and put my vote in right now uh, that I want to see Joey Donhouse kit. Um, I've loved watching the evolution of it from when I started watching your channel with the E kit and the triggered snare, you know, and the triggered symbols to like 
what you're what you're doing now and just the way you've I feel like you have your sound so dialed in, like it's so tight. It I took love it. me so long for that. Well, the thing is, uh, this is a good advice for anybody. So sometimes some of my covers don't end up well, but I still use the footage. I still use the audio. I don't upload that. I just I call them like practice covers, but they're for mixing. So I okay. use I have I have a lot of those just side notes. So not every cover is super good. So I have a lot, lot more of those than the ones I upload. <laughs> I get so it. I use those as practice okay. uh, for my mixing. And uh, I think one of them ended up being in my channel. Like I wasn't going to upload it because it just didn't sound right to me. And then I started tweaking stuff around, watching a ton of tutorials. And it, that, that would be like the POD Youth of the Nation, that cover for me. But yeah, it, it took me quite a while to, to get it to sound at least like to my liking. I'm still, I, I still feel that there's a lot more, but uh, uh, what I try my best, like to start off would be tune the drums as best as possible that you can. I use the drum dial, try to have every head evenly tuned and cymbals as far apart as possible because I really hit them really hard. So symbol bleed <laughs> gotcha gotcha yep yep that's good that's really good that's really good advice yeah start with a well-tuned drum kit yeah. and then, then the mixing then becomes a lot easier in terms of eqs and things like yeah. that because you're starting with quality something anyway you know so um that's that's really yeah that's really really good advice um then i'm going to ask you two more questions one of them is going to be um kind of a silly one and it's like I was asking Loretta, I'm like, what's something we can do or ask, you know, the, the wonderful people that want to come on our show? What's something <laughs> we can ask them that's different than than what anybody else is asking in their interviews, you know? And um, she's like, do a would you rather thing, like a drum related would you rather? And um, I need to start writing ideas down because I kind of make them up on the cuff. Okay. So, so my... I remember the last one you did. <laughs> <laughs> I, what was it? <laughs> it was, do, do you prefer to like uh, run? I don't know how long it was. Like, a, I don't know how many miles or play with uh, the, your kick drum with your feet. Or something. You asked that, oh, I think, to Joaquin. Yeah, I think it was Joaquin. Yeah. Well, good. And, and, I, <laughs> I won't ask that one. <laughs> were you about to ask that one? No, it was, I, I was like, <laughs> I wanted to make sure because I was like, this might be the same one that I asked, but fortunately we're good, but. <laughs> okay. I was, so, so it's going to be, um, would you rather break your snare head the first song of a set and not be able to replace it? Or would you rather not have a hi-hat or a ride cymbal through the whole show? Ooh, I think it's either like hi-hat or ride. Or what if they were both gone? Both, oh, both got, ooh, that's, <laughs> wow. So basically no cymbals, I'm guessing, because I was going to add like, is there a crash? <laughs> oh, I was, I, they could, we can leave the crashes, which kind of gives you some room to, to work. But. Okay. I, I can work with crashes. Like, because if I don't have a snare head, like it's, it's not like you can't do anything. So yeah, I would stay with the crashes. Right on those things instead of, yeah, absolutely. Yep. I would agree with you. I, you can only do so much with wood hitting metal. Oh, well, it, it would be it would become like bop, 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 bop. Yeah, you know, a little flappy, a little yeah. flappy thing and the, the mic's picking it up. <laughs> yeah, uh, it just doesn't sound good. Absolutely. Well, good. Thanks for indulging me in that weird, silly, <laughs> neither of those scenarios will ever happen question. Oh, hopefully. Well, I think this there ahead, I might tear it up. I don't know. I try to do it on purpose sometimes. So. <laughs> well, like I found that like now, like where I have more, uh, snares at my disposal so I'm not playing one is as frequently as like when you just have you know your snare right mm -hmm. and uh, so I've, I've not busted heads in a while so that's kind of a nice so do you like bust one change it bust one change it I'm just messing with you <laughs> <laughs> and then moving on Loretta like switches it out in, in between takes <laughs> oh my god no 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 <laughs> you lucky no, I mean that'd be pretty intense if we had that. The operation was that slick that she's like. I wouldn't be surprised of how slightly. organized you are. <laughs> no, if I broke a snare head, we'd be like, "All right, well, we're not using that take." 
<laughs> we just switch it out. But I did. I was recording in the studio one time, um, and I only had one snare. And I did. I I like right near the end, which was good, but broke it, broke the head, and was like, "Oh, I guess we're done for now." Then, and so I had gone out after that and bought like a piccolo snare drum, just to have as like a back a backup mm -hmm. snare for those kinds of situations. Um, anyway, now I just have them because like. So why not? I, because why not? <laughs> and 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 I'm making them, so it's kind yeah. of like I can I can do that. So I get get a variety of tones and sounds. Kind of a dream like dream drummer like life. It's like uh, I got a bunch of stuff. Every drummer <laughs> wants that. That is so cool. Loretta Loretta said to me at one point, she goes, "I I I see what you're doing." Uh, like you're you're building these drums for our online store it is for the online store come <laughs> on we all know that that's right Plus, well, it's so good I, i've been listening to them like pretty much like a a, a lot of guys so it sounds good and it, it makes you happy to have a I bunch of snares there <laughs> yeah like and i'm like i'm like i'm looking at it, i'm like I don't, let me see if we can just kind of okay. i need to get a let's see if this will work i need to get like oh a, there's a patriot so there's the patriot there's that yeah. new creation one and that's why pork pie Oh, Seven by thirteen, fire. love that size. Um, and then there's a uh, five by fourteen, and that my Tama over there, which is a uh, six by fourteen. So, and then I'm on here. What am I got on here right now? Oh, I've got the birch. I don't know if you can. Can we see it? It's a birch. Oh, nice. Okay. Over anyway. Uh, blah blah blah. But yeah, but it's just it depends on what you want to hear. You know, like it's nice to. Um, but that's just literally in the last year. I bought that pork pie, and then I had two snares. I was like, woohoo! You know, <laughs> yeah, you did a review on that one. I remember that. Yeah, and I love it. I love it. It's time to pull it back up on the kit for a little yeah. bit because it's just got a. It's it's the only metal snare I have. Everything else okay. is birch or maple, but different depths and diameters. So kind of get some fun stuff. Anyways, what advice <laughs> would you give to somebody starting out playing? Because now you've been playing since you were around eleven. You said eleven. Yeah, I would say. It. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. So uh, gosh. Pushing, pushing the 20 year mark here in a little bit. That's a long time to be playing. What yeah. advice would you give to somebody starting out? Well, uh, somebody starting off, uh, the first thing, if you're thinking about doing videos like, like we do, it would be like, don't get discouraged easily. And when it comes to picking a song, just pick a song that you know you're going to nail it. Like, don't overthink it. Don't pick a really hard song at the, at the beginning. That, why, that is going to cause you kind of to get frustrated easily. So, the easier you start, the, the simpler you go, the easier the path is going to get, like, meanwhile. Because if you start going, like, really high or really, like, hard stuff, and I mean, like, complex music and stuff at the beginning, it's very likely that you're going to try to continue. So start off with, like, the basic, simple stuff. And don't get discouraged if you don't have a lot of gear. Don't get discouraged if you don't have a drum kit. Like I've been practicing with pillows for a long time as well. So it's, it all comes down to how much you want to play drums and use whatever you have close to you to make it work. And believe it or not, if you start doing that, you're going to really start to enjoy. It. And little by little, you're going to start incorporating more and more and more things that will make you even grow and grow more. Yeah, that's good. I like that. Yeah, play to your strengths. I would like to yeah. kind of like piggyback out of that. And um, you can work on more challenging stuff, but like get some wins in the corner. Well, um, the thing is, many drummers have their, their strength. And sometimes we avoid using that because we want to try something harder that we're not good at. Yeah. And it's not bad to like, I highly recommend like if you've been practicing a lot, just practice on that. But just don't focus your whole entire like uh don't give your all, all to that because at, if you keep on trying over and over again, that thing that is too advanced for you, you're going to end up frustrated. But right. if you start using like something a bit more in your range, that is really good for you. You're going to build that strength with that. And it's going to build confidence to be able to move on to that hard part that you were looking forward to get. Absolutely. It's kind of like the, it's all connected to that. So it, eventually you'll get there. Yeah. Start. Yeah. I think that's great. Yeah, don't like set goals, you know, for yourself yeah. and work yeah. to this. I to totally agree. Um, there's sometimes I find myself falling into the, uh, well, we need to get a cover done. So I'll pick something that I know, yeah. I, like you said, I can nail pretty quick. 
And then there's other times I'll be like, okay, I've got several built up so I can spend the next two weeks, you know, working yeah. on this more difficult yeah. song for me. So yeah, I think that's a, that's really, really good, good advice. Listen cool. to Joey, be like <laughs> Joey. Um, and also head over to Joey's channel right now. Pause this video. We'll wait. I'm just kidding, but it'll be links. Go sub to his channel. He's got some amazing, amazing content over there. You'll learn a lot just by watching him. Super nice dude. Um, and I know like if you had any questions, he's happy to happy to help you out at yeah. answer questions about his mix. Um, I didn't ask you that in ahead of time, but that's kind of the vibe <laughs> that I get that I get from you. You're like, yeah, yeah I'll help out. <laughs> yeah for no for sure yeah I, I have no problem if you ask me i help you out with whatever i need most of the times people ask me a lot of advanced stuff that i don't have any clue i'm like i am <laughs> right pretty much learning. so i've been recording like real drums for less than a year so that, that's why i said tune the best that you can the drum and start working with that but if there's some like questions that you have regarding which plugins i use or stuff like that just hit me up don't worry i i'll show you my my whole arsenal of uh, plugins, whatever. Like I don't use that many, but I love it. Well, not yeah. I'm I'm learning too. I kind of feel like every every time I do a cover, I'm kind of like trying to discover something else and how I can make the sound better. Yeah. And and um, I think that's what I like about what you're doing too. Is just like this this constant evolution of improvement. Not not just as a as a musician. And you've always been good the time I've been watching you. But every <laughs> everything just incrementally gets better and better with each. Thanks. video and i think that's the i think that's the direction heading because we'll never be at a place where we've learned it all oh yeah that, that's true like for me it's like each time that i have a cover that i'm like proud of i'm like the first thing that comes to my mind i say to myself i can't wait to see this and think it's crap because i got better <laughs> yes yeah <laughs> because there's there's been many covers that i've been like oh this is so good it sounds really good a few months later i'm like ugh that means I got better. So I'm happy with that. Yeah, no, for real. When we started yeah. our channel, I hadn't played in two years other than like once a month at church. So like, it was, it was, I think I even said it. I'm like, just chipping the rust off <laughs> here, <laughs> trying try to improve. Maybe we can grow together. So I, we, speaking of growing together, you and I need to plan another uh, collab. Yeah. Maybe 21 maybe, Pilots. Yeah. Another 21 Pilots dedicated to Marcus drums. Um, yeah. I, I know. He's yes, a, yes. He's a big fan. He, he, he told me one time that he loves uh, 21 Pilots, his favorite number one band. I think he, he's just hiding that fact. We all know that. Yeah, we know because that they're mainstream, he's afraid to admit it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> he's too cool for them. That's, that's all lies. Marcus, we know your secret. We do. We know your <laughs> throne. We know how your throne looks. Oh, it's, just yeah, that's right. on, we, it's just to sit on it. Come on, Marcus. <laughs> I love that throne. Side note, love that throne. Yeah, it's me so cool too. Looking. I love Marcus. <laughs> Marcus is a great dude. Yeah, we'll give him a shout out too. Go check out Marcus Drums. Super yeah. great drummer, super great guy. Uh, you'll love him. He loves um, 21 Pilots. Yeah, definitely, <laughs> definitely hit him with a lot of 21 Pilots trivia. Yeah. He likes that. <laughs> he's gonna, he's, we're gonna get so many comments on this part of the video from Marcus. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I'm I'm thinking, what is he going to come up with this time? <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Okay. I love it. All right. Well, Joey, thank you so much, my friend, for hanging out with me this afternoon. I appreciate you. Oh, oh thank you for the invite. I'm really honored. Uh, it's been a fun thing. I've been waiting for this pretty much a long time. I woke up today really excited. I record normally on Sundays, my my drum cover. So like, I took it easy today just to be able to, to do this. So I'm like super oh. <laughs> thankful for this. And really thank everybody else that's watching. Like, thank you for watching my videos if you've been watching me. And to all the new guys, just head on over there, ask me any questions. I'll be glad to answer. Like, awesome. Awesome. You guys, again, go check out Joey Donhouse channel. Joey Donhouse channel. Kind of like I said it two different ways there. You said it correctly. Uh, <laughs> um, go ahead, head over to his channel, subscribe, like, leave a comment. Um, you'll be glad you did. Thanks for stopping by, everybody. We will see you next time.